Okay. Uh, hello friends, I am um, Rajneesh Kumar working as assistant professor in NIT Greater Noida, NIT Pharmacy Institute Greater Noida, one of the uh, best pharmacy college in NCI Delhi region. Mm. We have ranked 49th by the NRF, Government of India, all over the India. So, uh, uh, today's topic uh, mainly uh, mm, focused on naphthalene, its structure and synthesis. Okay. So, in the previous lecture, we have uh, talked about aromatic compounds, their reactions, uh, some of the compounds are also mentioned in the syllabus. We have also uh, discussed about the structure and uses of them. Now, in this lecture, we have focused only on naphthalene structure and synthesis. Okay. So, first of all, as naphthalene is a polynuclear hydrocarbons, it is having two benzene ring fused together at ortho position. Okay. So, as it belongs to the polynuclear hydrocarbons category, so we have to know that what are the polynuclear hydrocarbons actually are. Okay. So, as the name suggests polynuclear hydrocarbons, polynuclear means it is having more than one nucleus or you can say cycle, it is also known as polycyclic hydrocarbons. So, it is having more than one cycle of nucleus in their structure. Hydrocarbons means hydrogen and carbons are there. So, these are the compounds which are having more than one cycles or nucleus in their structure and consists of hydrogen and carbons atom. Okay. So, polynuclear hydrocarbons are the compounds that have more than one aromatic ring. These are also known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. In short form, we can use PAH polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons. Then polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbon molecules contain only carbon and hydrogen as the name suggests hydrocarbon is there. Hmm. Again polynuclear hydro aromatics hydrocarbons are generally hydrogen lipophilic and non polar molecules means they have the solubility in the non polar solvent only. They are not dissolving in the polar solvents because they themselves are lipophilic and non polar molecules. Okay. <coughs> then they tend to persist in the environments because polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are not very soluble in water. <coughs> now, how can we classify the polynuclear hydrocarbons? So, as you can see in the picket is also slide also, generally they are divided into two main categories. Okay. One is benzenoids and second category belong to the non benzenoid compounds. So, as the name suggests in benzenoid categories, those compounds are there which are having at least one benzene ring in their structure. Okay. So, these benzenoid uh, compounds can also be uh, you can say uh, grouped in to various uh, category. Oh, one of the group is of isolated uh, benzenoid compounds. So, isolated means the rings are separated, they are not fused together. They are joined together by a bond, but they are not fused together. So, they, the compounds like them are comes in the isolated benzenoid compounds category. The examples includes biphenyl as you can see there, biophenyl having two benzene rings which are joined together by a bond. Okay. The second category of the benzenoid compounds having fused rings, benzenoid compounds. So, again these fused rings means the compounds are fused with each other at certain position, they are not joined by a bond, uh, 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 instead they are fused. So, they may be two types, they may be linear fused ring compounds or they may be angular fused ring compounds. So, when we talking about linear fused ring compounds, so you can see that in case of naphthalene, both the rings are joint or both the rings are fused in the linear fashions. They are fused, uh, fused together on ortho position in the linear fashion. So, naphthalene is one of the examples. Anthracene is another example which is having three benzene ring joint or fused in linear manner. 
okay now the next category of the fused ring benzonite compounds are angular so as you can see the structure of phenanthrene in uh, it is having three phenyl ring but out of three phenyl rings two are fused on ortho position in the linear manner while the third ring is not fused in the linear man manner it is fused in angular manner so phenanthrene comes in the category of angular fused ring benzonite compounds again the second uh, important category of the polynuclear hydrocarbons named non benzonite compounds means they are the compound which is not having benzene in their structure okay so the important example of non benzonite compounds are azoline okay so now you know about the polynuclear hydrocarbons how they are categorized or grouped what are the examples belong to the different categories of polynuclear hydrocarbons now we come to the our topic which is naphthalene okay so as you have already uh, seen uh, seen in the uh, classification of polynuclear hydrocarbon naphthalene is there it is a linear fused polynuclear hydrocarbons so it is having two benzene rings fused at ortho position okay uh, the molecular formula of the naphthalene is c10h8 so as the name or as the uh, as the molecular formula suggest it is having 10 carbon but only 8 hydrogen so as you can predict by the molecular formula it is a very very unsaturated compounds okay so we can also number them so like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the numbering of naphthalene is done like that then uh, we come to the physical properties or appearance of the naphthalene so it is appeared as the white solid which crystallized in uh, you can say uh, uh, shinting plates it is having melting points about 18.26 degree centigrade while its boiling point is little bit higher uh, it's it's close to 118 degree centigrade then it is having very strong odor and it's very very volatile so because of that strong odor it is used as uh, uh, insect repellent uh, as a mouth balls then uh, when we talking about its solubility it is insoluble in water as i have told you earlier that much of the polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons are lipophilic in nature it is water insoluble they are soluble in the non polar solvents only okay so naphthalene is also naphthalene is also insoluble in water but dissolve easily in organic solvents particularly in ether and the benzene okay now come to the next slide um how naphthalene are isolated or prepared so naphthalene is actually isolated from the uh, coal tar so coal tar uh, is having different fraction when we go for the distillation of coal tar so based on on that uh, range of temperature we are uh, having uh, group of distillate hmm. so one of the uh, group we named as middle oil fraction of coal tar which is obtained when we distill of the coal tar from 160 to 230 degree centigrade then a, a distillate is uh, produced naphthalene is the major part of that middle oil fraction of the coal tar and it is largest single component of the coal tar about 60 to 10% so other polynuclear hydrocarbons are also obtained by the uh, fractional distillation of the coal tar which includes phenol and anthracene phenanthrene toluene so so many organic aromatic compounds are obtained and isolated from the uh, distillation of the coal tar naphthalene is the largest single component of uh, distillate of the coal tars 
comprise 6 to 8 percent of the total. The hydrocarbon was first noticed as a deposit in the condensed sir during the distillation of naphtha fraction and hence its name. So, as it is obtained by the naphtha fraction. So, it is named as naphthalene. So, as I have said you earlier that it is obtained by cooling the middle oil fraction of the coal tar uh, on the temperature from 160 to 30 degree centigrade range whereupon the naphthalene crystallize out the crude crystals are removed by the centrifugans. So, it is uh, this uh, particular fraction is having so many impurities along with them some other aromatic compounds are also there. So, naphthalene can be obtained or the other impurities might be removed by the centrifugation process. These are the melted and then treated successively with concentrated sulfuric acid to remove the phenols present as an impurity uh, in their uh, in, in that particular uh, middle oil fraction. So, we will treat that fraction with the sulfuric acid and phenol will be phenol will be removed. Finally, the naphthalene is supplement to give the pure products. So, at last we are getting the pure naphthalene. Now, come to the structure point of view. So, its molecular formula is C 10 H 8. So, it clearly indicate that naphthalene is having high degree of unsaturation in this uh, in its structure. So, <coughs> here we go the uh, evidence for the uh, structure of the naphthalene. So, we are having two types of evidence first is analytical evidence and second is the <coughs> synthetic evidence. So, in the first case in case of uh, uh, elemental uh, or you can say analytical evidence we just go for the elemental analysis of the naphthalene. So, by the elemental analysis we found that it is having molecular formula is this we again for the spectroscopy mass spectroscopy and we confirm the weight or molecular force mass of the molecular uh, naphthalene by mass spectroscopy. Now, the second part which provide evidence for the structure of naphthalene includes the synthetic parts. Here we use chemical reactions to establish the proposed structure of the naphthalene. <coughs> so, in the first uh, reaction we just oxidize the naphthalene, naphthalene get oxidized and the product is thalic acid which is dicarboxylic acid means two carboxylic groups are present on the ortho position. It clearly indicate that 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 particular that particular skeleton must be there in the naphthalene structure. So, this particular step, uh, skeleton of the carbons are confirmed by that particular reaction. Now, the second important reactions which help us to establish the structure of naphthalene was <coughs> how we just uh, uh, take the help of HNO 3. So, as you know that HNO 3 is a very good oxidizing agent. So, we oxidize naphthalene. So, we have indicated so as we know that two rings are there. So, first ring was mentioned as A and second ring of the naphthalene is mentioned as the B and that naphthalene is undergoes oxidation in the presence of HNO 3 very good oxidizing agent. As a result we have nitro naphthalene okay, one of the carbon is uh, substituted with nitro group. Okay. So, now we are having nitro naphthalene, now we are having two option. In one direction we go for the oxidation of that particular nitro naphthalene as a result we are having nitro thalic acid means the same skeleton was obtained on the oxidation. It again confirm the uh, presence of one ring along with the two carbon atom or the ortho, uh, on the ortho position and the naphthalene. In the second reaction, that nitronaphthalene uh, undergone reduction reaction in presence of some very good reducing agents. As a reduction, we are getting amino naphthalene as a product, and again, when that amino naphthalene undergo oxidation reaction, we are getting thalic acid. But we have to uh, focus on the ring which will be intact or which will be destroyed. So, in the first reaction we see that ring B is intact. 
means ring A will be uh, will be broken out, ring V uh, will be intact. How we can see that ring B is in uh, intact because nitro group was present on the ring B only, and the nitro group is also present on that particular compound. So it means ring B is intact in this reaction. While in case of this reaction, as you can see that there is no nitro group. There is no nitro group in the end product. It means ring B is destroyed in that particular reduction uh, process, uh, and ring A intact. This reaction confirm the this reaction confirm the presence of two benzene ring in the structure of naphthalene. Now, the structure of naphthalene is also confirmed by the uh, synthesis of naphthalene itself. So, we are using Howard synthesis for the establishment uh, of naphthalene. So, you can see we are using benzene or derivative of benzene and when we treat this benzene to the succinic anhydride in the presence of some Lewis acid like anhydrous AlCl3, we are getting carboxylic acid derivative in the first uh, step. In the second step, when we go uh, this carboxylic acid derivative undergone reduction in the presence of zinc amalgam and HCl, so mention reaction you can say, then you can see that uh, that that actually this should be oxygen. Okay. So, in the second uh, step, this keto group will be reduced to the CH 2 group. Okay. Now, again we go for the cyclization. So, in the presence of concentrated s 2 so 4 and you can see that here a new bond will be formed in between the benzene ring and the carboxylic group. Okay. We also know that concentrated s 2 so 4 is a very good dehydrating agent. So, one mole of water is removed and how the H from this carbon is removed and OH from there is removed and this new bond is formed. In the next step, we again work, go for the cremation reaction in the presence of zinc amalgam and HCl and we are getting a benzene ring which is fused with the cyclohexane ring together. So, there is the two ring compounds uh, which undergoes further reduction. So, again two new double bonds 1 and 2, two new double, double bonds is formed in the unsaturated naphthalene and we are getting our products. So, this synthesis of naphthalene also established the structure of naphthalene. Now, come to the part of resonance. So, as you can uh, see that it is a highly unsaturated compounds, it is having 5 double bonds in its structure. These double bonds are delocalized uh, and because of that delocalization different resonating structure of naphthalene can be possible. So, it is clearly indicated by the axial diffraction. Axial diffraction studies show that the unlike benzene all carbon carbon atoms or you can say carbon carbon bonds in naphthalene are not of the same length in particular C 1 and C 2 bonds is shorter than the C 2 and C 3 bond it should be C 3 bond. Okay. So, you can clearly say means C 1 C 2 bond is shorter than the C 2 and C 3 bonds. It is its length is somewhat 1.3 sing angstroms while C 2 and C 3 bonds have 1.43 angstrom length. This difference can be understood from three resonating forms. So, as you can see there delocalization of the double bond sucker this double bond moved to um, there this double bond to move there and this double bond move to there. So, as a result we are having another um, structure and again uh, the double bonds of the second ring will be uh, delocalized 
and we are getting the third structure. So, these are the resonating structure of the benzene because of that uh, it is having more stability than the other products. So, you have noticed that C 1 and C 2 bonds is double in two structures as you can see here and a single in only one. So, there we are having three structure 1 A B and C you can see that C 1 and C 2 bond C 1 and C 2 bond is double in two structure A and B matlab yahan par bhi dekhi aap double hai yahan par bhi ye jo bond hai C 1 se C 2 wala ye double bond hai aur C mein kya hai ye single bond hai theek hai ki nahi therefore it is expected that C 1 and C 2 bond to have more double bond character means it is having shorter bond length and C 2 and C 3 bond to have more single bond character means it is having longer bond length. Okay. Now, the resonance energy of the naphthalene is about 61 kilo calorie per mole. This value is less than twice the amount of single benzene ring which is having only 36 kilo calorie per mole. As a result, naphthalene is somewhat less aromatic less aromatic means more reactive than the benzene. Okay. Now, come to the synthesis uh, part of the naphthalene. So, the synthesis of naphthalene is very easy to perform. It is synthesized from 4 phenyl 1 butene in presence of calcium oxide and heat. So, 1 phenyl 1 butene is there in the presence of calcium oxide and heat uh, naphthalene is produced along with the 1 mole of the hydrogen. Okay. Now, the second important and most important uh, synthesis is Hovar synthesis. Okay. So, Hovar is a synthesis, uh, Hovar is a scientist which invent this uh, reaction. So, uh, actually Hovar synthesis occur in the different step. In the step 1, benzene and succinic anhydride react together in the presence of anhydrous, anhydrous Lewis acid like an address AlCl3. Okay. So, by the reaction of benzene and succinic anhydride, we are getting butonic acid, uh, sorry, carboxylic acid derivative named 3 benzoyl propanoic acid. So, in the first step, we are getting carboxylic acid derivative. In the second step, this benzoyl propanoic acid undergoes reduction in the presence of zinc amalgam and SCl, or you can say Clemenson reduction is going on in this. Step 2 and we are getting 1 uh, sorry 4 phenyl butanoic acid. Okay. So, you can see reduction is going out. What is reduced? This keto group is reduced, C double bond is reduced to the C H2 group in this particular reduction process in the presence of zinc amalgam and SCL. Now, come to the third point in the third step, this 4 phenyl butanoic acid which is a reduced product in the second step uh, is undergo cyclization. Here concentrated SO4 is used uh, to cyclization, 1 mole of water is removed, H uh, this carbon is having 1 hydrogen, this hydrogen and hydroxyl group from the carboxylic group is removed and the uh, ring uh, a bond will be formed in between this carbon and this carbon a new bond here it is it is formed and carboxylic group is is uh, converted into keto group okay and the structure form is known as tetron okay in the next process or next step tetralone is again heated with the amalgated zinc and SCL to give tetraline. So, again reduction of the tetraline occur okay, in the presence of zinc amalgam and SCL and we are getting 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydronaphthalene which is also known as tetraline. So, now we are almost there uh, to produce naphthalene. The only thing we have to achieve that we have to uh, introduce some double uh, two new double bonds in the uh, cyclohexane ring in tetraline. So, for that we just use some catalyst like palladium or selenium. So, when this 
tetranein is heated in the presence of selenium or palladium. We uh, have got naphthalene as a product. Okay. So, uh, it is all about the structure and synthesis of the naphthalene. So, the important point just I just want to remind you for your examination. Hmm. Uh, so, within a very uh, short period of time. So, naphthalene it belong to the polynuclear hydrocarbons, polynuclear hydrocarbons uh, they are uh, very easily available in the in environment and they persist in environments because because they are not very soluble in the water. Okay, they are lipophilic in nature. They are much soluble in the fat. Okay, so they are persist in the water. Then polynuclear hydrocarbons into uh, categorized into two categories: benzonide and the non-benzonides. Benzonides again categorized into isolated and fused ring. Isolated mainly uh, the mo most uh, common examples is biphenyl. Linear fused rings uh, includes naphthalene, while angular uh, fused ring includes phenanthrene. Down benzonides uh, category mainly includes azulene as an example. Then you have seen the structure. There is two benzene ring which are fused together at the ortho position. The molecular formula is C10H8, which is clearly an indication of the unsaturation present in the naphthalene. Then the uh, melting point is somewhat. Uh, higher it is all about uh, 80.26 uh, degree centigrade boiling point is much higher in comparison with other aromatic compounds it is 218 degree centigrade which is having very strong order very very volatile in nature we already mentioned that it is insoluble in water hmm. then uh, it is isolated from the middle oil fraction of the coal tar. Okay. Uh, the other aromatic compounds are also there like toluene, phenol and anthracene, phenanthine, but naphthalene uh, is the largest component of the coal tar fractionation. Uh, then uh, uh, it is uh, the impurity is present in the uh, crude naphthalene isolated from the coal tar is uh, uh, removed by the different uh, um, methods like Phenol is removed by the treatment of a sulfuric acid. Okay. Then we come for the structure. So, you have already uh, see that hmm, naphthalene is uh, uh, when we go for the oxidation of naphthalene, it provides thalic acid, it establishes the structure of this carbon shelter. Then uh, we have also gone through this that it also proved that this reaction also proved that benzene having uh, naphthalene is having two ring to fuse together. We also discuss ortho var synthesis. Then we also discuss the resonance structure of the naphthalene, which clearly indicate that delocalization of the double bond occur, and the length of the double bonds and single bonds are different in the naphthalene. Then uh, resonance uh, energy, it is more resonance energy than the benzene ring means it is more reactive than the benzene. Then we also see the uh, synthesis. So I hope. Uh, you have found uh, this lecture uh, important for uh, your preparedness for the AK2 exams. So, we will meet in the next lecture and we will talk about the other aspects of the naphthalene, which includes reactions also. So, thank you very much for patience listening. Thank you.